Tausch and I have run into a teammate, uh, Kyle Wallace, who I know you know from your various appearances. He does KBN with Kyle. He's Kyle. With Ben Brust and Brad Nortman. And he is like super fan 99 when it comes to the Packers. And yet he is confessing that he is nervous about this team. And I don't know if it's like he's nervous, Tausch, because everybody is talking about how good they're going to be or if he actually sees flaws because this is the first time I've heard anyone this offseason not just talk about how good this team's going to be. So where are you on your nervousness scale, Brian, about what could go awry with this team? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was on with KB on Monday, and, and he was talking about how Jordan Love is the most overhyped player. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you got to settle down. <laughs> like, you, you, you really got to settle down. And you, I can tell he's a little nervous. And, and I'm not sure if he preferred – the way it was last year where there were absolutely no expectations. He's been a Green Bay Packer fan for a long time. I can't remember the last time there was a season besides the last season that there weren't very high expectations for the team. So does that mean every offseason he just goes into this thing a nervous wreck? I don't know. But I prefer to like and follow the team and, and cover a team that does have these high expectations. And you do expect a lot out of them. And, and I don't have a bunch of – issues with this team right like I think I've been very clear that the issues that I've seen are in the secondary especially at the corner position opposite of Jair like how that's going to play out Mm -hmm. in training camp is obviously something that I'm looking forward to seeing and and then obviously the other one is if Zach Tom isn't able to play week one which again I think he will be but if he is not able to play week one what does the lineup look like who's playing where who's doing what uh, and and kind of how does that look like? And and if the answer of the Zach Tom, if that whole thing gets settled out by, I mean, I doubt he plays any preseason games, but say he's doing some stuff at practice by preseason number two, maybe mm-hmm. three, I'll feel a lot better about what's going on up front, right? Like that, the, mm-hmm. there would be a lot of, you know, question to answer. And then the, the next thing is just secondary. And where and who's going to step up and play that opposite, cor- corner, uh, opposite corner position of Jair? Because – we all know with the way this defense did it, because if we look at the way it was implemented in Seattle, Sherm was on one side. No one picked on Sherm. When they picked on Sherm, he was able to jump routes and do things like that. I expect that to be very, very similar with Jair and how Jair is going to fit into this thing. And then you'd always pick on the opposite corner. You'd look at the other corner. And they always had good guys, you know, Maxwell and a few other guys. They always had solid guys, but that's who you picked on, right? And – To me, that's my biggest concern is who's going to be opposite of him and who our team's going to go to pick on. And and, and if we have someone that fills it, if it's Stokes and he steps up and he ends up, you know, being that first round pick, we all thought he was, all my questions are answered. And and I feel really good about the team that we have. Yeah, I just, the, the nervous part of this, can you be nervous about Jordan Love? Because I felt like that's kind of where Kyle's at. He doesn't want to pay him. He wants him to take, like, a Daniel Jones contract. It's like, well, that's not how the world works, man. It, I just don't have any reservations about paying Jordan Love because Brian Gutekunst, Russ Ball, and Matt LaFleur have all said, well, at least said th- those two have said publicly, not Russ. We know this kid. We know what he's about. We saw what he did in the second half of the season. That really, to me, is the only thing that you can really be super nervous about is, is he going to play like he did in the second half of the season? Or if he plays like he did in the first half and he's taken up that big of the cap, that's what I think Kyle's nervous about. I don't have any of those reservations because I believe Russ Ball will get this contract structured in a way that the Packers will feel really good about. If he is playing great, it's awesome. And if he's not... I don't think it's going to be as burdensome as maybe everybody else. So that's, I think, where Kyle's coming from, but I just don't have any of those reservations. Yeah, I don't have any of those either. And I think we look at, and I've, and I've said this so many times, and, and I think what we saw in the first half of the season was a culmination of a lot of things, right? I think we saw very 
hesitant play calling from LaFleur. He was very protective of him, didn't really, wasn't aggressive with Jordan Love. I think we saw really bad offensive line play. I think we saw receivers that weren't confident, didn't really know what they were supposed to be doing. And then obviously, I'm not saying Jordan Love was innocent in the whole thing. Obviously, he had his hand in it. But when all those things are going against you, it's very hard for a quarterback to play like himself. And finally, I, you know, midway through the season, or I always, I always reference the Pittsburgh game, even though they lost. It's kind of when all that changed. And we saw a different guy in that Pittsburgh game moving on. And that's who I think Jordan Love is. I really do. And, and then with him having that confidence and the way he plays, that gives confidence to everybody else. It gives confidence to the guys up front. It gives confidence to the receivers that if I'm open, it doesn't matter if I'm wide receiver number one or wide receiver number four. If I do my job, I get open, I'm getting the ball. He's going to spread mm -hmm. it around. So I think, it, I think there's a – of, for me, at least a very positive outlook on how this is going to go for Jordan Love this season. Because I, I, I think he's going to pick up where he left off. Sure, we may not – he may have a blip throughout the season. Everyone has a little blip. As long as it's not like an eight-game blip like we saw early in this, you know, last year, I don't think I have any issues with giving him this monster contract. Because I think who he is is what we saw at the end. Yeah, I, there's only one aspect to his game that makes me wonder – if there will be more than one little blip or two, and I'll explain that coming up.